Hey, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Let's go ahead and take a peek in the, the laboratory. And what I wanted to show you, this little experiment that I did earlier with the second head and the second coil, I decided to add more capacitance on top. Now, so far what I noticed is I can't add more capacitance to the NST. This is one NST, 15,000 volts, 60 milliamps. Now, I do have another one of these. I haven't played with it yet and take it out of the box, but we will double the current to 120 milliamps, and I'm hoping I should be able to go up in capacitance. A double capacitance? I don't know. We'll find out. Anybody knows, leave their comment. But, um, but I, I doubled in a half top load. So basically we were looking at this, which is like, uh, God, I forgot what I did on the Java. You guys use the Java, but uh, the calculator, um, I think this was like 40, four, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 40 picofarads which is a thousand less than a nanofarad. Any of you guys like reading about Tesla? I suggest you get this, and I suggest you get that. Beautiful stuff, that's all I'm gonna say. Beautiful stuff. Back to this guy. So, we uh, have probably three times the amount of capacitance on top and top load. So uh, without adjusting the capacitance that's in tune with the, with the um, inductance, the inductor, the inductance, um, I had to move around the primary to adjust to this. But what I noticed with, with having this other coil in here, it, it, is, it is crazy. It is freaking crazy. I got a lot of a lot up there, and, and and we're hitting the mirror now. You see the distance from the mirror. It's got some good distance. And what I do have is still I've been messed. I've been working my butt off, but um, which is great because I'm making money. But I haven't messed with my spark gap yet. And this spark gap mm, had it forever, and it's just not the best. So I'm gonna fire this. Let's, let's get this thing fired up. I'm going to fire this up. Um, um, we're going to put it on real low spark gap. We're going to mess around with some lighting. And um, we'll go ahead from there. We'll turn on the, the blower and blow some air in this sucker. And um, it also works when you suck it or blow it, by the way, in case you guys uh, didn't know that. All right, you can say lights are out in the palace. Let's go ahead and find the cord. So we got light bulb lighting up to bring it over to the coil. my finger light bulb Woo, holding a good charge to the light bulb this is on over here that one's on over there and we got the spark gap going real low I'm surprised that thing is really Bouncing out like that. That's a that's my finger. That's a whole lot of something going on there. So let's go ahead and fire up a little bit.
still on. Look at that radiant. It's without breakout, so it's emanating light pretty damn far. You guys leave your comments. Appreciate you leaving your comments. That's a whole lot of it. Ozone, I would say. My, my, my. So, what does this show you? It shows you that um, the top load can be, I probably could put some more top load on. And obviously, having the hose in my hand with the air um, makes it go on and off, on and off. So, I'll focus on making that stable. And then I'll focus on changing the spark gap and uh, I'll get the right materials. And then um, we'll come back and re-entertain this and see the difference there that will be more precise. And then we'll get the freak meter out and we'll go ahead and put a little antenna on that. And what I like to do is leave the gap tight, close, and we'll take a walk with the freak meter. I'll put a, I'll put a um, extension cord on it and we'll see how far it reads. Then we'll see how far the light bulb goes out from the E field of the Tesla coil. And um, from all the stuff I'm reading, uh, uh, obviously uh, we'll, we'll deal with, it ain't just a pole in the ground and a wire going in the ground. Uh, we're going to make a grounding connection that's going to hit the ground like a goddamn sledgehammer. And uh, even though we're not Tesla and we're not um, having the power that Tesla had and we're not able to go to the stratosphere or the upper ionosphere, we can't break through that insulation. But with these Tesla coils, they resonate, not resonate, but they break through the barrier um, of, the, um, of the capacitance that's in the ground. So we could use these. To penetrate the ground I believe it's the ground that will be taking the distance to um, uh, pick up a light bulb a mile away or a block away is the fact that we're going to duplicate what you, whatever I use as a transmitter will duplicate as a receiver and it'll be the ground with the capacitance that's up top will be going out like a cannon okay and that blast of capacitance goes out but it has to come back to the source and, and I believe that it is almost like a reciprocating and that's the thing you get with a Tesla coil unlike radio transmission where you're just sending out electromagnetic they go on their own with the capacitance i believe that you're you're oscillated but the more you oscillate that back and forth between the transmitter and the receiver then they will have a steady stream of conductivity in the air like you would have up in the stratosphere um, but you have it down here in this medium the thick ether medium that we have is we call air so there's variations um variables there which would be um the pressure of the air itself but i think the grounding is once i get this nailed um and get the free get meter out and start pinpointing the precise frequency that i'm driving then at that point I could set up identical receiving coil and have it set up in a certain way there where this static capacitance is what it is, is going to be running in the air at the speed of light, but in through the ground where it's connected should beat it, should beat it there. It should, at the receiver, as long as it's grounded, should have the energy there waiting for what the air does come behind it, speed of light. So leave your comments, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.